Oh. Okay, welcome all to the Master Long Show. Year of Dragon, let's go, let's go. So today I want to say special thanks to Dominic Teo. So today, Master go hiking la, or in the west side. Then suddenly got one person say, Hi, are you Master Leong? I say, Yes, I am. I say, Baba, uh, yeah, Baba. <laughs> you not toxic, that's not I say, No, he's not. And then we, we chit chat for about, I think, uh, one hour like that. Also, I had a very good time uh, chatting with you, Dominic. So, thanks for support. Yeah, so Dominic uh, also retired fire already. Oh, so, like to go walk, walk. Same, same as Master, la. also wear one backpack also. So we know, ah, see each other, same pattern one. No, it's on the same boat already. Yeah, so 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 if you all see me outside, ah, if you really got the yuan fen, got the fate, you all see master, just say hi to master. If I'm alone, I, I, I'm free, I, I'll definitely chit chat with you all. Master, very friendly one. <laughs> okay, yeah, so welcome all to the Master Young Show. Okay, so Mr. Tokoyomi, good evening. Cash 11, Dragon Year haven't start. Yeah, so I think Chinese New Year is February 10, ah. One more month to go to the official dragon. So, wow, the market is very, very red. Uh, These few days keep selling down. Chong Costa, good evening. Uh, empty Power Dragon, what la? LYS, uh, red day, let's go. <laughs> yeah, Josh Key, welcome, welcome. J Lo, everyone, what, what. So, in the US market, right, wow, keep selling down. Eh. So, from January 2 until now, the, the entire week, this whole week is down. Pre market, before I came in, the NASDAQ is down another uh, 1%. So this whole week keep selling down. So that there is a lot of fear coming back. Uh, what is happening is that last year investors was too optimistic, super super optimistic. So what happened is uh, we expect the market was expecting six or even seven uh, red cards for two zero two four. Now they are becoming less optimistic. They, they are becoming more realistic. So in the coming Fed meeting end of this month, right, most likely they will hold it there, la, 93% chance based on the, the, the futures market. Most likely they, they'll hold it there at 5.25. The coming meeting, the one in March, right, it was as high as 80% chance that they will cut. But now the market is pricing it 62%. But I myself, I tell you, whether they cut or not in the March meeting is 50-50. I still think it's 50-50. Uh, the market is still too optimistic. And now they are coming back to earth. <clears throat> so overall, right now we are at five point two five. The market, right, is pricing in of look at here, four percentage point. That means five cut one two three four five, five cut. There's a forty percent chance that by the, the end of this year, by November, forty percent chance we will be at four percent interest five cut. So market now is instead of pricing in seven six now they are pricing in five cut. But the Feds themselves, they are saying, uh, based on the dot plot chart, uh, three or, or four cards. So my, my view is, uh, by the year end, we should be at about 4% interest. Uh, that, that's, my but that's my personal view. Yeah, so we see how it goes. Uh. So, uh, the US market is a bit weird, how, why we have such a weak start. But I don't think that the market is crashing. I don't think that the market is crashing. The, Market is just doing a readjustment, so so I, I'm not too worried lah. So don't be scared out, don't, don't paper hand. Yeah, continue to buy great companies, uh, they are undervalued. Oh, Mr. Tokoyomi, yeah, SE is down, Baba is down, JD is down, everything is down. These few days keep selling down. Oh, uh, Chiu Kiao Yong, oh, welcome, welcome, good evening. Freddie Ong, as you read at Chinese New Year, haven't Chinese New Year, the Ang Pao Ang Ang already, very color already. Anantas, welcome. Oh, they say that every time cut, will lead to market crash, is it? Yeah, usually uh, when I start to cut rates, by the way, when I start to cut rates, right, it means that uh, the economy is no good. That means, for example, like during 2008, right, the global financial crisis, they start to cut rates very aggressively because our uh, banks were exploding, real estate was exploding, uh, automobile companies was exploding. Uh, then they quickly cut rates from 5%, they, they cut it to zero, just, just within like one year like that. Or because we, they were facing a recession, so when it cut rates in two thousand eight, it led uh, it was it was a global financial crisis. But this time around, it doesn't feel like a, a global financial crisis. Uh. it feels very different from what I experienced one and a half decade ago. Yeah, but but they are saying no lending. They are saying soft lending. I'm I mix uh. I, I to be conservative. 
I still expect a soft landing. Uh. Yeah, that means maybe very weak GDP growth for the US in 2024 or might even be a negative growth for US in 2024, small negative. Yeah, everybody missed the, the Ivy Lim. Uh, huh? Clement, alamak, <coughs> come again, don't lose heart. Dragon year next month, next month, dra Dragon, we go, okay? Yeah, Swifty forever, Daniel Ng, welcome. So many Chinese Hong Kong stocks cheap. Yeah, China market is very cheap. Uh, everybody miss Ivy Lim. Ivy Lim may be still on cruise. Uh, Aquarius just bought a put on QQQ two weeks ago. Wow, so yeah, Aquarius, you're printing money. Well, QQQ down, down a lot. I think down 4% already. Eh. SPY is down like 2%, QQQ down like 4%. Shadow, Mr. Tokyo Mi. Oh, everyone missed the Ivy Lim. Ivy Lim is doing well. La. People busy. La. Family people. Ma. Yeah, she will come back uh, when, when she is free. Don't worry. Oh, lazy investor. Last time Fed said inflation 2% then cut. Now 3% they want to cut. Yeah, because the problem is that now the high interest rate environment is putting pressure on a lot of US companies. I shared the other time that US bankruptcy increased by 30% in 2023. So the worry is that they, they keep interest rate high for too long and many companies explode. So they must balance between the economy and, and, and the stock market. Definitely the stock market prefer to cut, cut as soon as possible. Then the real economy, they have to balance uh, between inflation or to uh, saving the, the, the companies. So uh, the cut probably much then they decide it is wise because you want to look at the November, I uh, really saw the November CPI, you want to look at the December, January, December and January uh, CPI, whether inflation is really over or not. But on the flip side, now there's worries in the Middle East, the Red Sea. So cargo shipping cost is skyrocketing because they cannot take the Red Sea route or they, they must go a detour. The cost of shipping has increased. So the worry is that if this is prolonged, then inflation might come back. So, so that's the case for, for not raising rates. So, so now it's very mixed, a bit uncertain. Only March, then we know the answer. Yeah, but, but whatever is the answer, for me, I'm still gonna DCA every month into the Hong Kong market because the Hong Kong market is so cheap. Also, Jojo, welcome, welcome. So let me begin also to share on the Hong Kong market, the China market, which is the main focus. So, oh no, Zhongzi, China Shadow Bank files for bankruptcy. So this is the, the headlines. But we already know that this is going to happen already because the, the staff of them, they, they were arrested. They're going to investigation. So Shadow Bank is like a dirty word like that to, to strike fear. Basically, they are asset managers. They manage the fund or high net worth investors. So these investors, they can afford to take the loss. So I don't think it will bring systemic risk. Uh, mainly because they, they were doing shady things and they had exposure to the property market. So now they are, they are going bankrupt. So I don't think this is a systemic risk. Or the, the core system is still the uh, China, the big six banks. Or if the big six bank suddenly got one go bankrupt, or then, then I'm worried. For asset managers, they, they go bankrupt, it shouldn't affect the financial system. Just that people will be uh, resistant to, to make investment. They will feel that investing is risky. So for the China market, right, investors are betting big that the PBOC, the Public Bank of China, the central bank, will continue to, to lower rates. So there's a growing cost among economists calling for the, the CCP la, to, to continue to cut rates. The last time they cut was in August. Also, they are expecting that another cut will happen as early as this month. So before we go for the Chinese New Year, we get another cut. So the expectation is a total of 20 basis point cut uh, in the interest rate for this year and a 50 basis point cut in the reserve ratio. So the coming first quarter likely a 10 basis point cut. <clears throat> so lower rates is definitely good for the stock market. So interest rate is like gravity like that. Low rates push the market up. High rates push the, the market down. So hopefully they, they will cut, they do cut rates uh, before Chinese New Year. So for the China 10 year yield track, right, it's really very low really, the, the 10 because market is really pricing in these expectations of lower rates. So 10 year yield for China is 2.5%. So we saw this happening uh, during the lockdown period, the, the pandemic crisis, uh, during the 2015 stock market crash, during the global financial crisis and during the dot-com bubble. So usually during a crisis, then people flock to risk-free asset. And risk-free asset because there's so high demand 
or the yields uh, come down to as low as 2.5%. So the 10 year yields already rock bottom already, 2.5%, whereas the US it is 5%. Uh, so it's very cheap to borrow money uh, in China. And you can see that the trading of uh, China government bonds saw to record in December. It means that a lot of people they are hoarding cash. That's why the, the stock market is weak. Everybody uh, just get 2.5% risk free. Nobody wants to take risk. So given that now everyone is so risk adverse, have we bottomed? What is the outlook ahead? So uh, at the market peak of 2021, uh, the Shanghai uh, index uh, lost about 42% from the peak already. So already a uh, three year bear market already. So this is comparable to their previous stock market crash off in 2015. So uh, the current earning yield of the uh, Shanghai index is about 8% or about ch uh, 12 times earnings. Lah. Also, this 8% earnings yield right, or is 5.7 percentage point above the 10 year yield. Because the risk free you get 2.5%, uh, but you buy stocks or you get 8%. Uh, so buying stocks is super, super rewarding. Am I right? You grow your money at 8% versus you grow your money at 2.5%, but nobody wants to take the equity risk. Nobody wants stocks. So usually this is a signal of maximum pessimism, maximum fear. So look at this chart, right? See, uh, over the past uh, two, two decades, well, you can see the earnings yield or minus the 10 year uh, yield. So now the earnings yield is uh, 8, 8 over percent, you minus 2.5%. So that gives you a yield of about uh, difference uh, of the yield about 5.7, about 6% like that. So during the uh, 08 uh, global financial crisis, the difference spike also. The, the equity stock market crash, or uh, then the earnings yield spike up, and then the difference uh, was uh, 6%. We also saw the same thing happening in 2015, or uh, 2014, 2015, the crash. The same thing happened also during the uh, COVID crisis, and now it's happening again. So most likely, most likely, uh, it has uh, the the spread has peaked already, meaning now equity stocks is at the record bottom lows. Stocks have bottom based on this signal, and this signal is hundred percent correct based on historical data. If you take the data from the past three decades, you can say that, uh, if the gap, uh, which is the, the, the difference in spread, is more than five point five percent, now is at five five point seven five point eight percent. If the gap is more than 5.5%, right? One year later, you confirm make money, one. You confirm, and the average you will make about 57% return. This is based on historical data. So you can look at the, the what they are saying here. So when the stock and bond that you get is 5.5 percentage points or more, the following child much time you will get an average return of 57%. Or and every time if so that means what? Example, at this point, this moment, if you buy into Chinese stocks, based on historical data, 100% bao jia, 100% you should make money one. And average, you'll make about 57%. Or uh, was this the same levels as the 208 global financial crisis, as the 2015 stock market crisis, same as the COVID crisis also. One of the data disparency is 2012. But 2012, it was like a flash crash at that. It's an intraday crash then bounce back. So this is actually not a crisis. The 2012, it wasn't a crisis. So this is actually an outlier data. You can delete away this data. If we delete this data, the average returns is even higher. It will be like 80%. So don't be surprised. Uh, people who are courageous, those who are buying now, they are buying today, one year later, they can easily double their money. So, so that's the core hard truth. So be greedy when others are fearful. So master every month end. I count my money, I see what's left over, then I'll DCA into Alibaba and JD. So, so that's my plan for 2024. And once in a while, I'll buy Ping An. But Ping An, the bite size is, is much bigger. Or master the, the mouth small. Only, I'm only putting in $1,000 per month. Also, so I, I DCA into Alibaba and JD is more affordable for me. Oh, so another indicator. Another indicator. So I show you, right, it's not that on speculation one. Like, wow, China market, sure, chong, sure, what? Sherwin is all on historical data. It's based on facts. Also, look at 2015. 2015, we saw the China market crash. Or then we saw the foreign purchase record lows. Nobody, the Americans, the Europeans, they don't want to buy. But sentiments were so weak. Same for 2023 last year. 
we saw record low purchases. Then you look at the chart. So below is the chart of Alibaba. Same thing. In 2015, Alibaba actually crashed to below $60. Same thing. 2023 now, Alibaba is now trading at about the $70 level. So it's the same thing. The farm flows affects the stock price. Now the Alibaba stock price is at record lows because there's all the American and European investors, they sold out of Alibaba. SoftBank sold out of Alibaba. That's why Alibaba crashed from $300 level now to the $70 level. Yeah, so at this level, right, your downside is very limited. The worst case, it breaks the $70 support, it comes to $60. $10 downside. Your upside, what is your upside? You could double your money easily to $150 by the year end. Also, my target, 150 to 200 by year end. Then next year, we, we go for 250. So 150 this year, 250 next year. So whether can we do that? <laughs> One year later, we'll know the answer. So master will be here. Uh, whether crash or what, master will still stream. Uh, boss, now YouTube is my part-time job. So China, now the government is also pushing uh, for, for the sentiments in the equity market like this. They want to reverse the, the crackdown in the gaming sector. So China launched more diversified stock index to push the growth sector. So growth sector is, is their, 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 the key sector. Lah. Or example, like semiconductor, renewable, green energy, EV energy, all this. Uh, so the China actually have launched additional blue chip uh, equity benchmark in an effort to boost investment in listings deemed strategically important. So in the China market, people usually will look at the CSI 300, the Shanghai 300 uh, index, but that one is very heavy on like property and financial, and it hasn't been performing well. So now they make a new index, the A50 index. So what's the A50 index? It's more like uh, more diversified, less heavy on financial. So the biggest component is the consumer stock like Guizhou Mao Tai. In the future, I might do a deep dive on this. Then Ping An, I already done a deep dive. So Ping An is insurance. Then CATL is a battery maker. We also see like a BYD, also battery maker and they're also an EV maker. So this relates to the EV industry. China Merchant Bank or is one of the big six uh, banks. Then uh, Meta, uh, Media Group. So it's like electronics powerhouse. Think of it like, like uh, Philips uh, in, in the Europe like that. Or like uh, how say, Mitsubishi uh, or, or in, in Japan. So basically, it's that your aircon, your refrigerator, your television. So there are electronics powerhouse that's made there. China Yangzi Power, basically a utilities company, green energy like solar, wind energy. So Zijing Mining, so commodities. Then also pharm pharmaceutical. So this one I'm not familiar. Then securities exchange. Me or medical, I'm really unfamiliar. So I won't cover medical or beyond my circle of competence. Uh. So financials, consumer stocks, technology. So these three is where I want to focus for 2024 because these three example like consumer stocks, uh, Hai Di Lao, Guizhou, Mao Tai, uh, uh, all these you, we, we can understand because you, you can research that their products. So financials like Ping An Insurance or China Merchant Banks or we can look at the financial data, the financial statement. Then technology one like, like BYD, CAT, I think it's harder to digest. But I, I want to uh, try to cover a bit more like, on, on the EV industry because China is the leader and will dominate the world when it comes to electric vehicles. Yeah, so these are the new areas that I want to cover also. So stay tuned for more coverage by Master in 2024. Okay, so then of course I will still cover the, the big tech companies uh, because they are translating to the consumption, the economy of China. So Pinduoduo, now right, oh, they, they, they are feeling the competition uh, for them, right, they are very focused on their core e-commerce business, but they are very reluctant to expand into other business. You are not seeing Pinduoduo do logistics. They are not doing payment. They are not doing cloud. So they wanted to do the location-based service, meaning like food delivery, la, ride healing, la, all this. So for Pinduoduo, right, there's hot hours on its local life service. Basically, they don't want to compete against Meituan. They don't want to compete against Erlemei. They don't want to compete against Douyin. Meituan has about a 70% market share. Erlemei has about a 25% market share. Douyin has about a 5% market share. So there was rumors that Alibaba wants to sell the Erlemei to Douyin. Because Erlemei doesn't have much synergy with e-commerce. So people who order food, people who do right healing, they are not into e-commerce. 
So Taobao and the Elemin doesn't have uh, much synergies. So uh, food delivery ride hailing is called location based service. Either you send something to you, or you you want to go somewhere, or you want to book hotel, or you want to uh, book a gym, or you want to book an air ticket. So all these are location based service. And Meituan is very dominative. Whereas the Elemin business right fits the Douyin business very well. Because like short form video, you see people eating, do the mark bang or, or eat example, let's say mark bang or KFC. Then you see, wow, very tempted. You then you just one click order KFC, and KFC is delivered to your uh, uh doorstep. Or you watch the short form video, wow, the cafe, wow, so 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 nice, wow, Wang Hong Cafe. Then you also want to go to the cafe. Then you just click the address. Then you order a cap, a right building. Then you go to the cafe. So location based service right fits social media short form video very well so that's why it makes sense for alibaba to divest their other main business to to bite dance or oh, the the location based business doesn't synergize well with the taobao team now yeah so so uh, that's the problem so ping toto maybe they also realize this or oh, the location based business doesn't synergize well with their e-commerce business so they they want to completely hot this location based uh, business really so they did make some investment or oh, you see the Toto Mai Chai business development team of around 300 people to sign up all oh, the brick and mortar outlets because you need to get all these restaurants uh, uh, to, to participate so that you can do the food delivery and the tourism as attractions uh, to sell ticket so they, they signed in some costs already but but now they, they reverse uh, they, they, they change gear why because the management is not satisfied with the performance of the Toto Mai Chai Toto my side is basically groceries delivery. So they established this during the lockdown period. Toto, because Ping Toto started as Tuanko, means community buying. Means that example, you uh going to WeChat, you invite your friends, 100 people together, you all order one carton of carrot, then you all split it, then the cost is very low. Or you order apple, you order mango, you order fruits. They started with community buying of agricultural products. Then when we saw the lockdown, they brush into groceries delivery. It means individually they, they outsource to a third party to send uh, like a basket of fruits, vegetable, meat, and uh, rice, all these basic needs. So they did quite well during the lockdown. But now with the reopening, the total my chai, nobody uses it. it. It was only popular during the lockdown. Now the reopening people just go to the supermarket or press press the watermelon, press the mango, or press everything also, but all the aunties, all this, they like to touch and they buy. So uh, the physical uh, groceries, they are doing well. Example, Fresh Hippo, that's under Alibaba. So they are be opening, I think, uh, 100 over new outlets or uh, in 2024. Uh, that, that's their target. So they previously, they had 300 outlets, so they're going to open another 100 outlet. This goes to show that Fresh Hippo, online to offline, physical groceries are doing well or due to the reopening people want don't want to stay at home all the time they want to go out and, and see the, the 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 lobster dancing then you pick fresh or not that's why the, their groceries delivery is not doing well the performance is not well so they decide not to branch uh, into food delivery and the uh, right healing and also it is not profitable or, or, or over during the lockdown the three years they still not profitable it's very hard to do because the cost in China, in the past, they outsourced the rider to a third company, third party company. You don't have to pay the insurance. The rider, bang, die, you don't have to pay, do a payout. But now, after the tech crackdown, now the riders are actually protected by certain labor law. Example, you, you can have like, example, your Meituan, you have a free, uh, few hundred thousand delivery riders. You have to ensure that all of them have insurance so that if they get to an accident or they get a payout, so the insurance maybe they buy from Ping An, they buy from China Life, or they buy from China Typing, I don't know. Or but but all DV riders or they are insured. Also, so that that is something that is fair. Whereas in Singapore, like Grab, or we, we our government never cracked down on Grab. So uh, our local DV riders they, they don't have insurance. Also, if you get into an accident or then your leg is injured, you cannot do delivery. Wow, so so that, that is very dangerous. Yeah, so China people will criticize that, oh, this crackdown, it hurts Meituan, it hurts Erlame. But you think about it from, from a social point of view, or oh, it's it, it actually helpful. Like, you must think a delivery rider, well, every day they make 100 delivery, yet they don't have insurance coverage because the companies are taking advantage of them. 
So after this crackdown, now all these delivery riders, they have the insurance coverage, but this additional cost. And because of this additional cost, if you are a small player, as you only have 5%, 10% market share, you don't have the economies of skill, then you cannot turn profitable. The only one that is profitable is Meituan, because they have a 70% market share, or you have a, a economies of skill to cover the cost of, of like insurance or all this. Yeah. So the next is also like Alibaba. Like I say, businesses that are not called to them and has no synergies, like the Erlame has no synergies, they want to sell it to ByteDance. So for Gogo X, so Gogo X, what is it? In, in Singapore context, right? Or you will see Gogo X, you will see Lala move. So for them, it's basically they are a delivery, but to like deliver your documents or to move your furniture. For me, I use Gogo X and Lala move. I see which one cheaper because I use it to move my furniture or like, like my, my cabinet, my bed, all this from one place to another. I want to move any heavy furniture, I just use it. So for example, I, I just want to move my, my bed and, and, and one shelf. So that's a knot. Uh, I just put it, pile it out on a lorry can already. So that cost me, I think, like $60 only to do the delivery. So that's very affordable. In the past, when I move the entire house, I need to spend like maybe two or three thousand or to, to, to move the entire house. But now I just do a few trips or one, use the lorry or use the van. Every time I just pay $40 or $60. So it's very affordable. It really changed the, the industries. So a lot of these uh, companies that do the house moving run, right, they all become freelance. You have, you have a lorry, you, you have a van, you, you can do the house moving business already. And it's uh, on demand. Immediately you use the app, you ask for the delivery, you wait a few minutes, someone takes your order, then you, they, they will come up, pick up your stuff, then you, you they will load it up into the van or lorry, la, then you'll sit in front, they, they have one empty seat for you, yeah, and then you go to the location together. So that is very convenient. Also, but the problem with the Gogo X, right? So Alibaba feels that it doesn't have synergy. Like, this is a bit like location-based service already. So it cut its stakes uh, four times over the past two months. So from about uh, 12% stake, it cut down to about 9% stake. So they cut their stakes about more than uh, 3%. So we also saw Alibaba cutting their stakes in Xpeng, which is the EV company. So those businesses that has no synergies to their core e-commerce business, they keep reducing their, their stake. Whereas those that they feel that is related, for example, logistics, uh, cloud uh, payment, then they hold on to the, to the stake. So Alibaba will have more cash uh, in their balance sheet. So I'm very hopeful that in her uh, next next earnings result uh, or the next next one, they can increase their dividends, they can increase their share buybacks. So just uh, wait for the, the good news can ready. So I don't like the Google X business. Uh, it's very competitive. It's loss making. So a lot of this that uh, location based service, right? The problem why they are loss making is that the human cost, the labor cost is very high. Yeah, so the market value of Gogo X has crashed more than 90%. So this is like a high growth tech. In the past, they grow like 30, 40% growth rate, but they are unable to prove themselves profitable. So now it's like 63 cents, like going bankrupt like that. So for if you want to invest in high growth tech, be like Meituan, Grab, uh, uh, Man, Gogo X, or whatever, the big question for high growth tech is that are they profitable? Have they turned profitable? If they did not turn profitable in 2023, you must ask yourself, were they, why should they turn profitable in 2024? 2023 was the year that most companies did a lot of cost cutting, did a lot of layoff already. If their business model works, they will have turned profitable in 2023. If they are not profitable in 2023, they could continue to be unprofitable in 2024. They could go bankrupt. Yeah, that's why I will. That's why I only bought into SE, C Limited, because they turn profitable and they have a lot of cash in their balance sheet. I know they are not going bankrupt. Whereas Grab, uh, Grab, Grab themselves, uh, they haven't fully proven themselves to be profitable. So I'm a bit skeptic on, on, on Grab. So Gogo X, uh, their main competitor is the Lala Tech. Or in Singapore, we see is the Lala Move. Lah. Then in, in China, it's called the Huo, Huo Lala. Or La 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 Chi, pull here, pull there, uh, move the goods. So, so these two are the top competitor. La. Then TT is also their, their competitor, but TT is not sh so strong in, in, in this area. La. So I, I would say, yeah, so uh, usually for, for this kind of business, it's really the, the top two. La. Whereas the location-based service, only Meituan is profitable. 
Earl Le May, I think is is uh not profitable, but they are they are near to they they are near to break even already. The Earl Le May, yeah. So lastly, uh, talk about high growth tech Lazada. Lazada, as you know, n- number one in Asia is Shopee. Number two is Lazada. Number three is TikTok Shop. Uh, based on uh, market share la. So Lazada, they are rumored to be preparing for IPO in two zero two five. So they want to tidy up their numbers. So previously, two days ago, I shared with you heard that they are doing layoff in Singapore. So it, it seems that they are not only uh kicking out people in Singapore, uh, all across Asia, they are laying off workers. So the A Singapore understands that Lazada has let go all its chief marketing officers in various countries. So no need to do marketing really. Uh, so it seems that what? Gone are the days of expansion. They don't want to expand already. They want to change into harvesting mode. They want to turn profitable. Because they want to IPO. So in addition, a fifth of Lazada Malaysia staff have been let go. Wow, so that, that's a lot. That's a lot. So according to Tech in Asia, Lazada intends to cut about 30% of their manpower across the Asia region. Basically, that their Asia region, uh, Philippines, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia, Singapore, a- Asia region. So they have about 10,000 employees in these six countries. So 30% means 3,000. 3,000. Singapore is rumored to cut 100 people. So they have a lot of workers uh, across uh, Asia. So 2024, oh, be happy that you still have your job. Retrenchment is coming, but I think it's more towards the tech sector. Uh, if you are, let's say, like finance, uh, hospitality, or, or medical, I think all these are, are still quite safe. Uh. It's mostly the tech industry. Why? Because 202122, we saw the boom in high growth tech. Then Asia, we also got a lot of investment uh, to, to, to do all this high, high growth tech. And now it's reversing already. They, are, they, are, they have to turn profitable or, or they, they go bankrupt. So, whichever, either way is less jobs. Because they go bankrupt and everyone is fired, am I right? But they lay off workers, they lay off 30% of the worker, they turn profitable, then it's a win for, for shareholders. So the trend is that the tech industry is, is no good. Yeah, if you're in the tech industry, just pray hard that you get your bonus. Uh, yeah, then, then you don't take your money all in Alibaba. Have, have some cash war chest. Have six months of your expenses uh, set aside. Yeah, so, so lastly, uh, next month is Chinese New Year. It will be a year of the dragon. So the Feng Shui Master, wow, Feng Shui Master, wow, I see them chill. Eh. Like, wow, I see really ha, itchy, itchy, eh. wow. Somehow I saw this YouTube video below got her WhatsApp number. Eh. Can have private session oh, for her to see your, your, your luck for 2024. Wow. Don't know what is her consultant one-on-one service fee. Eh. I don't know. Eh. Uh, but I, I did give you the hint. Eh. You go and search. Eh. I give you the keyword already. Eh. If you... Want to know your luck for 2024? Oh, can go and check out this interview. Then in the end, got this contact. Uh, I think her name is Vanessa. Yeah, this, this Feng Shui Master is Vanessa. She, she's from China, but she studied in Singapore. Yeah, so it, she's in Singapore. La, Feng Shui Master. So you want to see whether your luck uh, good or not. Then, then, then you. But for uh, in her video, she said the one that has the best luck uh, is chicken. Chicken because Long Feng. Dragon and Phoenix. So Phoenix represents chicken. So those born in the year of the chicken. So my, my elder brother is chicken now, 42 years old. So those who are 42 years old, 1981. Wow, your luck is maximum. So I hope you hope be big. Master is 1983. Uh. Master is pig. Uh. Pig. But pig, uh, I don't know good or not. She never say pig good or not. Yeah, but chicken is very good. Uh, chicken and dragon, long feng. Uh, da, long and feng, very good. If you are born in dragon and chicken year, this year your, your luck is very good. That, that's the summary. Like, or you want to know more, then you go and find the Feng Shui Master. Yeah, so, so that's all my sharing for tonight. Yeah. Okay, okay. Chit chat a bit before I go uh, offline. Okay. Dominic Tio. Yo, 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 Dominic Tio. Yeah. Hello, Master Leong. Thank you for the copy of Kosong. Awesome. Most welcome. Yeah, so very funny. So today I met uh, uh, Dominic Tio. Then we sit down at the uh, coffee shop there. Chit chat la. Then he want to buy me drink there. Wow, thank you. Yeah. And I say no, 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 master treat you because as my viewer, right? You all tip me ma. Sometimes you all tip me three dollar, my little ping, uh, five dollar type. Then Dominic say he he never tip before, but I say never mind because you watch my video, I earn already. Every one thousand view, master earn five dollar. So every time you, you watch, right? You come and watch my live stream, I earn a few cents for from you already. You watch 
entire year right i earn a few dollars from from you already uh, if you're my regular viewer viewer i already earn a few dollars every year from you from the advertising so from if you meet master right? master will treat you name copy no need to treat master yeah so so uh, uh dominic uh, very very nice to to know you so so everyone will welcome uh Do dominic Tio. yeah so uh, dominic Tio already fire and, and retired already yeah so same as master la. Uh, like to walk walk walk, walk cc la. also hope uh, we have faith uh, we can bump into each other again yeah yeah, yeah so Lee Yong, welcome welcome uh russell c welcome baba like double bottom soon yeah 2067 2067 is the hansen tech etf uh no no dividend they, they will reinvest everything for you if, if i'm not wrong yeah 3067 hansen intact etf so so i think that there's no dividend for this one no no no, no dividend yeah i think that no 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 dividend yeah wow so cheap ah wow you see now it's bottoming off already it's consolidating ah, i would say it's consolidating if you look at the, the the longer term chart yeah so this one eh, no dividends yeah but but if those who like a smaller bite size uh, instead of buying 10 cents well you need so much money yeah, you just buy the hansing tech etf 3067 sm smaller bite size yeah so okay oleg china order local hedge funds to buy stocks yeah 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 uh, on and off they, they, they will do that uh. so they also ask the uh, funds to, to launch equity funds don't launch bond funds they want more money to go into the equity market yeah aquarius uh i'm, I'm buying what 3067 2823 Oh, and three one one zero. Wow, I don't know eh. All oh, this two eight two three Hong Kong ETF. Yeah, I have it. Yeah, so let me see what ETF is this. Oh, China A fifty lah. Yeah, this one also can lah. That means this one have the the Guizhou Mao Tai. Uh, that means have some uh, traditional business uh, inside also. Three one one zero Hong Kong ETF. Yeah, what is the high U one ah? So this this high U one inside uh there's the banks and the property stocks. Yeah, but but I I I don't like this one so much. Yeah. I I don't I, I don't like this one so much. Yeah. Yeah, I boss I, I still prefer the uh capital gains. Yeah. Wow, you all know the ETF so much, yeah. I don't know. Ah Nico, AK71 should buy Hong Kong dividend stocks now. AK71 he, he very defensive. Uh. He all is the CPS Singapore saving bonds. He don't want to take risks. Nivra, welcome, welcome. Uh yeah. Empty pulse, ah, ML got guarantee or no guarantee la. No empty master can, where got money to guarantee you all, but based on historical data la, stock in there with 100% success rate la. It based on the the past two two decade, two three decade the data, this is 100% win based on historical data. Uh, but but this could be a freak incident la. Then based on historical data, now buy is pulse ya, sure win. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Re Reggie Bar Baragui, Master, wish you happy new year, wish you happy new year also, hope everyone can, can do well also, yeah. Yeah, read the article in Financial Times about the internal struggle of Alibaba. Western media is all very negative about Alibaba, but I cover both sides, the bull and bear case I cover with you, and I share with you the historical data. So you look at the bull case, you look at the bear case, then you weigh whether it's worth investing uh, in the China stock or not. Oh, CB Nicholas Z Chen, CCP not doing enough la. But CCP every month they are launching a, a, a new new things la. Every month they are having new measures to to stabilize the property market to to push the equity market. Yeah. Yeah, Singapore market, uh, the China market and US market is is very different. Uh, like I, I I mentioned like that, like the location based uh service. Uh, so for CCP right. The prioritize the good of the common folks like the really riders they must have insurance so so that hurt businesses but it protects the common folks then even the property market uh they have the pao jiao lo means sure deliver the property so if you are a common folk the property developer go bankrupt you still get your property the, the state-owned banks they inject money they get it completed you, you are hand over the property so they want to protect the common folks but they punish the the capitalists that means equity bondholders they are wiped out so so U.S. market and and China market that's the difference. You uh China market to protect the common folks first. So we must understand the difference uh in in the culture. Yeah, food C uh China A fifty ETF two three two eight. What's the difference? Uh? I also don't know. Yeah, we can take a look two two eight two three ETF uh Fan Supermart. Fan Supermart it, 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 it is is quite good. Usually they they show the 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 the, the components all this. 
Yeah, it don't have. Uh. Yeah, okay, holdings. This one, uh, yeah, it's under bedrock. Uh. It's under bedrock. Yeah, let's look at the holdings. So, I think he has the Mao Tai or this one, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, it's, it's the Guizhou Mao Tai. That's uh, CATL, BYD. So, it's the same as just now, the one that I covered also. Yeah, it's a bit similar. Uh, but this one is those that are listed in the Shanghai Exchange. Look at the ticker code. So, all this is, is traded in the Shanghai uh, Shenzhen Exchange. Yeah, not the one in the Hong Kong market. Yeah, this is the... The, this, these are so called uh, A shares, uh, A shares. Okay. Yeah. Uh, wow, chop cucumber. Uh, you don't, 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 don't uh, chop cucumber, okay? <laughs> yeah, so, so the Ping Dodo pull out of the, of the uh, location base is good news for me, Tuan. They, they have less competition. Uh. But I think it will consolidate. Uh. It will become a duopoly. I, I think no smoke without fire. I think Alibaba will sell the other May to Douyin. So in the end, it will be uh, Meituan versus Douyin, oh, the two of them, in the food delivery uh, segment. Eddie Chandra, so wife, no need buy back, just keep the profit. Uh, don't, don't, and sell wife, uh, don't, don't sell your wife. Wife is keep for the long term. Yeah. SL Lim, download this video after the stream, just in case but, but, uh, ML has to disappear. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I can't have lawsuit, right? Or what? No, lah. 100% is based on the data la, 100% la. But really ma, you see that is not I say one, this, I got it from Bloomberg, Bloomberg News say 100%. It, it, it is wrong, you, you must blame Bloomberg, I oh, cannot blame Master. Master just reading the news from Bloomberg, plus I add some of my own uh, personal analysis la, yeah. Uh, so, okay. Wow, Eddie Chandra, all in Ch China ETF with leverage la. Just endure la. Master also endure for the past two years already. My two three and eh, two, two three and two two. My portfolio negative returns thanks to Alibaba. But two zero two four. Master will fight back. Our oh, positive returns. This year master still don't make money. Master go jump already. Just kidding. Just kidding. Oh, master go swimming at Bedok. Yeah. Okay. I skip skip skip. I see. Got any question la. Then then I ask you. All. Oh, go Kim. Thanks again. For, for your Milo Peng, every time go go game trip, master to Milo Peng, then I must talk a bit about the crypto. Oh yeah, so crypto, oh, up again. Ah. Oh, hey, crypto very strong. Eh. Why? Ah? The whole market is selling down, but, but crypto is going up. Leh. Oh, you see, oh, crypto so strong. 44k, we capture the 44 so, 44k is the resistance level. Lah. But I think it will break the resistance and go higher uh, once the, the uh, Bitcoin ETF is here. But I, I never see any major news. Lah. So I think it's, that's why I still think that we are in a bull market because Bitcoin is so-called the risk asset. That means people who buy Bitcoin are, are the risk taker. So there's high demand for risk asset. We, we are still in a bull market. Only when Bitcoin crash, then, then we are a bear market. So looking at the Nasdaq, uh, Nasdaq this year, right, wow, start of the year keep dropping. Uh. Like, so futures is down a bit, uh, a bit red, uh, a bit red, small red, uh, small red, okay? No scat, no scat, small red only, no scat, no scat. Yeah, year to date, uh, it's down one, one, two, three. Three sessions in a row down already. So tonight, another down session. I think Nasdaq is down about uh, uh, 4%. Uh, uh, it's down about 4 all, all the way down, you see the chart. Oh, uh. but, but I don't think it's a bear market. Uh, uh, it's just a, a small pullback only. Don't scare, don't scare. Unless for major news, uh, then, then, then I, I, I will update you. Uh. L4 wrong. Wow, so pretty. Uh. A feng shui show. Sure accurate ah. Uh. Wow, you all haven't calculated the feng shui you say accurate ah. Uh. Oh, you all see the book by the cover uh. People pretty means it's expert already lah. Uh. Oh, if ugly, that means it's not guru lah. Uh. If it's chobu means ah. Uh. Wow, that means I think master also want to be feng shui master already. Yeah, just talk whether the feng shui good or not lah. Uh. Maybe I go and pai si shui yi uh, Ask her to take me as a disciple. Can or not? Yeah, maybe I go and contact her. Yeah. Honey, go. Master, if I meet you, will treat me. Ah. Oh, no need, no need. I treat you all. You all support me. I, I very canton. I will treat you all. MK, I heard those are released by Lazada get very good competition. Five months, ah, eight months. Ah. Wow, like that, retrench good. Leh. Take the five months, eight months pay and, and whack the Alibaba. Buy the Alibaba stock. Just kidding. Yeah, oh, Lim CH, born in pick very good prospect this year, dragon year. Usually, pick is very good one. Uh, I'm born in the year of pick la. Usually, pick my luck is the maximum. My luck usually is, is quite good la, I, I would say. Because I'm, 
Daniel Ng is monkey ah. David Wong is also monkey. I don't know monkey good or not. Eh. You all must ask the Sifu. Eh. Oh, she's the Sifu. Eh. I'm not the Sifu. Eh. I, I don't know the monkey good or not. Eh. I don't know how to see the, the, the feng shui. Eh. Yeah, MD Pals. Well, tell us. I'm hiking on the look for me. Eh. Don't look for me. Eh. I don't have time for you all. I want to spend time with my girlfriend. Eh. But you really got, got yuan fen. Eh. Really, on the streets, you bump into me. Then you just say hi to me. Yeah, I will chit chat with you. Eh. See whether uh, you got fit or not. Eh. Yeah. See whether yeah. Go Kim Celsius is to exit bankruptcy pending court approval and will transition to a new company. All seems like all the uh, crypto company that went bankrupt now is uh, coming back already. So hopefully those that put money right, they, they have some residue asset, they can use the asset. Yeah, Olic, India just reported over 7% GDP, well, very strong. But India market is all time high already. Yeah, Lim CH, AK71 portfolio, mostly Singapore banks. Yeah. His portfolio, I think 40-50% of his portfolio in Singapore banks. Power of dividend. Empty Pulse, who has mobile eye? Mobile eye crash a lot there. Mobile eye is do what one? Uh? I forget already. Mobile eye. It looks like a tech company, uh, I remember. Auto driving, uh, well, cannot. Uh, this one, I think uh, profit warning. Uh, well, it's punch on profit. This one, I think can, cannot touch. Uh. Cannot touch. Uh. Yeah, because only a few of them will win uh, in, in the like, robo taxi. The one that is leaving, leading in the US market, in the level 4 full job, I think it's called, it's called the Waymo. Waymo is under the alphabet. The other one is, is called what? Uh, it's Cruise uh, or what? Uh, sorry, uh, today my nose very itchy, uh, allergy. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Ah, Nico, your wife born in the year of pig. Uh, wow, she can pass you some luck. Yeah, but chicken is the most lucky uh, this year, based on the the what the expert is saying. Uh, chicken is the most lucky. Yeah, if, if your wife or your husband is chicken, then, then uh, you, you can quite quite also. Yeah, so what? Wow. Swifty forever. You are Airbnb for one week. Yeah. Okay, enjoy your, 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 your holiday. Yeah, yeah. US down, China also down. US go up, China also go down. China always down, down, down. Uh, but, but I think... Uh, we are at the bottom really. Uh. Airbnb, I heard nowadays a lot of additional fees. Uh. Cleaning fees, uh, management fee, uh, this fee, that fee, everything also fee. Uh. Yeah, more and more expensive. Yeah, so that's all my sharing for tonight. Thanks all for coming in. So I'll continue to update you all. So uh, the China market, I, I think the downside is limited. Uh. So so uh, short term, uh, I don't know, we, we might test the $70 support for the Baba. Oh, I think well, naturally suddenly the, the, the chat move very fast now. Okay. So Baba, I think pre-market is down 1 or 1.5 percent. So yeah, down 1.5 percent. So coming to 73. So the Hong Kong 998 might, might test the 70 level this month. But I think $70 still a strong support. Uh. So just endure one more month, just wait for the earning results and hopefully February, once we go into the year of dragon, we can ball. Oh, SJP is snake. Uh. Wow, snake, I'm very scared. Uh. Snake can eat the pig. Uh. Just kidding. Uh. Yeah. Snake, oh, snake, I'm I scared. Uh. Uh, chicken genius, uh, chicken, chicken, uh, chicken, very good. Must listen to chicken. Yeah. Chicken take up 1G, become chicken. Ch chicken, chicken, chicken. Uh. Don't end so fast. Uh. You all still want to chat. Master tired already. Uh. Nowadays, uh, I lazy to stream 2 hours. Uh. Nowadays, I, I keep my stream at about 1 hour. That's about it already. Master getting lazy already. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, so so hope you all enjoy my, my, my sharing. Yeah, don't, don't worry. So if you all want to chit chat, can go to the uh, hardware zone forum, uh, EDMW. Uh, so so I, I, the other time I shared the link already. So if you all want to continue chit chatting, feel free to, to chat at the hardware zone forum. Yeah, heavy CGL, BTF, yeah, everything will increase. Uh, everything go up. Uh. Oh, 135, welcome, welcome. Just nice you come in, master call it a night already. Nowadays, master the, the sharing uh, is. Uh, Fast, fast, short, short. L, I swear, master. Oh, pick ah, uh, you pick ah. Uh. So uh, master for forty years old, you're thirty eight lah. Uh. Wow, you, you are you are very young. Yeah, master is old pick already. Yeah, you are young pick. Yeah, so so that's all my sharing. Oh, uh, thanks all for coming. Good night. Have a good rest. See you all tomorrow night. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ding ding ding.